So we're going to do a quick update on our Terrace 1 food forest which we finished planting in March. It's now the beginning of April. So you can see the solar panels at the top there point to south. Behind me is where the wind comes from. We have a windbreak planted there. At this end we're mainly going for evergreen things to help with the wind. There's a strawberry tree here with a guild. Around it a tangerine tree there um, which got eaten by a goat but it's coming back. There's a carob tree. Another strawberry tree, Madalonia, and a bamboo. And then below this as we go down we've got a swale which filled up when it was raining. We dug this in November. So along the swale we have quite poor soil from within the swale and we've put things here to just hold the, the bank, rosemary, we've got cabbage, um, broccoli all the way along here and then we've got fava beans and clovers which I'm going to cut back um, as green mulch to try and improve the soil and then along the top we've got propagations of trees which we planted, Telia, quince, um, that's quince there, and the pomegranates. So it's all really green, which I'm very surprised about because it was such poor soil. And this pond is the overflow from the, the swale. The swale was full, and so was this pond when it was raining last month. And then what we planted around the pond is one guild with the keystone in the middle which is a wisteria and around it some perennial vegetables ground covers in front of here you can barely see but the clovers have sprouted and then we have strawberries herbs and mainly salad type perennials around uh, this pond here we have a chase tree which gives a pepper like substitute We've got a cherry tree not looking too great, but it's budding and fennel and various um, companion plants in this guild. And then over on the mound, beyond the swale here, we have rhubarb, we have a nitrogen fixing tree, we have artichokes, another rhubarb, and the rest of it's full of fava beans and full of clovers and lots of oats growing because we use straw with oat seeds in as mulch. So I'm going to come through here and just cut everything right back and then I'm going to plant pumpkins in here for a, a, a cover. I'm going to try and leave some of the flowers because the bees are quite enjoying them. And then there's our greenhouse on the terrace below. Um, we planted in November this pineapple guava. So the guild is coming along nicely. We've got rhubarb and kale, some sp spinaches, um, sweet Sicily, uh, sage, comfrey, everything it's sort of taking. You can see I've already cut back the, the green oats which grew. So I'm gonna come back and just cut that every week um, and then that will die off through the summer and it just gives us a continued supply of green and then we have in, in between uh, th this next guild, the grapefruit and the pineapple guava we've got a myrtle and the Himalayan indigo nitrogen fixers you can see that all the herbaceous layer is really taken we've got a type of thyme here we've got barrage spinach, all those ground covers, blueberry, loads of oats for me to cut back later and fava beans. Over on the other side there's clovers, wormwood, oregano and we have spring bulbs coming up in there. Then we have a pomegranate tree and it's gilled. This used to be an olive grove. Uh, the olive grove burnt down five years ago so I cut back the dead tree and left two to four trees around each one because there was uh, maybe ten or more sh shoots around 
then I've pruned it back and put some aged sheep manure below. Around all the olive trees I've put uh, seeds of watermelon just as a ground cover. So there's an irrigation line going through there which is not to irrigate the olive tree because it doesn't need it but I've just put one drip there for the watermelon. And then we have summer fruiting orange and it's gilled. You can see our gills are quite big. I like to I like to try and irrigate using drip irrigation and quite a large circle away from the tree sort of flooding quite a big area and that encourages the roots to grow bigger but also will irrigate all the other plants that we have in there and also when it rains it captures a lot of water for the tree um, so yeah we have another guild there and then an artichoke I transplanted today and then I've covered the pass or we've covered the pass with wood chips just to reduce the weeds uh, and also to bring in uh, more biomass into the food forest so here's another olive tree from from what grew back five years ago from the fire it's not doing as well as the other ones and around this one we have two blueberries and you can see we have an alfalfa ground cover that sprouted and then I've also planted in all the areas where there is ground covers I have planted watermelons too so this alfalfa will grow we'll chop and drop it and leave the watermelon to take that place so along the wall it's a bit darker but we've got blueberry and then a nice guild with a lime this lime looked in pretty poor condition but the buds are coming back I bought this in the local market and all of them were a bit lanky and looking pretty poor but I really wanted to get a lime in here next to that is a strawberry guava and it's guild companion plants and this one is a lemon. All the way around these three guilds we have strawberries and each guild consists of plants to attract beneficial insects, to repel pests, to bring in uh, nutrients like there is a uh, ground nut planted there to grow up the guava which is a nitrogen fixer. And then we have no another blueberry. This area is full of brambles so we sheet mulched and put a, a goji berry which we took uh, which is a cutting we took last year in November and it's grown really well. On the terrace above there are a fig, two figs which we uh, removed the brambles, they're quite overgrown. This one we've pruned back and this one we're leaving uh, with lots of shoots just, just to try and get a lot more leaves here um, for privacy for the caravan behind. So opposite uh, these three guilds by the wall we have two nitrogen fixing shrubs, one male, one female sea buckthorn. Around this one we got some cabbages and also a ground cover of uh, beans to fix nitrogen here which we'll chop back and again we've got the watermelon in there. On this side you can see the green um, cover crop sp just sprouted which is mustard and then um, we have a fasalis and uh, uh, tom tomatillo. Uh, we've got our cabbages are all gone to flower, but they're great, loads of different types of bees just constantly on these, on these plants. All these different bees coming for the pollen. We have a cherry tree here. And the path follows around here. Around this olive tree we put uh, a sheep mulch of just aged sheep manure. Um, and watermelon. This one was an olive tree given to me by a friend which I planted on my birthday two years ago and then one year ago and then we have a Pisalis and then here the cover crop is a, a mix of wildflowers and then this is our, our berry area uh, and in this gap here we have cut two hot compost piles so I'm trying to leave one area for composting. So this is the berry area. We have two raspberries, a Siberian pea shrub, and in between sorghum to grow and chop back and then um, allow the watermelons to take over. I'm not sure if you can see, but there are six grafted apple trees, three varieties, which we grafted during our food forest course. And another olive tree here um, with um, 
compost underneath and biochar and watermelons. So here we have three guilds, uh, mainly consisting of berries. That's a main keystone here is the Canadian service berry and uh, various different perennial edible plants here. In fact, a lot of them look like they were dying when just after planting and Maya will be happy to know they're coming back, even the nasturtium and a type of Phasalis coming back. We've got garlics coming through. I like to plant some type of bulb in every guild. Um, but I only type, plant one type of bulb in each guild to help with identification, so we know what's in each one. Uh, we have blueberry over there, barberry. This is a Chinese mulberry guild with a whole array of perennial plants in there, comfrey, herbs, kale, red currant here, blueberry. This is a dwarf quince in this guild, and also another blueberry, and pine berries, so white strawberries all the way around here. There's an artichoke in there, some garlic. Um, and then over here we have a large shrub. It look, doesn't look so large right now. Um, but it's blue bean and then here we also have gooseberry, tayberry, various edible flowers like hollyhock, herbs and then we have a clumping edible bamboo and then here we have blackberry and then the cover crop here is both clover and peas which will be taken over by uh, watermelon with the cover crops again in each corner I like to do one type of cover crop or nitrogen fixer or green manure rather than mixing them together just to help with identification and showing people around and for our own learning. Here we have sheep mulching all the way along here where there was a lot of brambles. We've got some sea buckthorn, rosemary, uh, there's three types of fissilis. Um, I'm going to make this whole length of this wall um, edible berry hedge. So all evergreen hedges uh, that give us berries. This fig tree as well was pruned. This old fig tree, fig tree that was here um, was pruned on the course and cleaned up. Then we have an apple tree guild here with rhubarb. This was planted in November so you can start to see um, the herbaceous layer coming through. There's rhubarb, tayberry, borage, um, spinach, Welsh onion, fennel, a few different herbs in the mint family. So that is the food forest. I'm going to come through here and just chop back all the oats and chop back all the grass and plant pumpkins up on, uh, in some of the guilds I'm going to plant pumpkins and the leaves can grow into the, into the path. Um, and then I'll quickly show you the windbreak that we planted. There's quite a lot of wind here, so it's going to be a while before this windbreak actually does anything for us. I tried to, tr to stick with edibles, um, but also you're limit I'm limited to what I have available. So we took some trees that are up along this line from the side of the road, some silver birch, and the maple. Um, we have um, used an old irrigation line along here, so there's a lot of holes in it um, from where we had it on an annual bed. So everywhere there's a hole I've put in a cutting. So here's a pomegranate. I've actually put in another type of watermelon each in each place where there is a, a drip irrigation. Hazelnut. This is an ash tree. Uh, Telia, quince, um, loquat, doesn't really like the wind as much but it's, it's evergreen and it's edible. There's a few different flowers in here. Uh, fig tree not looking too happy. Telia, a few different flowering shrubs. Um, honey locust, so it didn't look so healthy but now has a few buds. And then as we come up here we have a Chinese cedar, flamingo tree. I've planted some oaks in between. There's an ash. 
There is uh, Italian older, some uh, cedar trees, cypress. Then we have another Italian older, another cedar, cedar. Then we have an olive, a wild olive that just found its way here. And we prune these hawthorns and then it ends with a, another olive and then the cork tree. And then beyond the wall where the wind comes from is slightly higher where currently sheep graze. Next year we'll plant another line to the windbreak. So the idea is to eventually have two or three different lines to try and create a thick windbreak and we'll gradually remove things like the cedars and try and stick with the edible ones. So that's our food forest. I'll try and give another update in a couple of months.